If you turn with me to 2 Peter 3, we speak for just a moment about just a moment, <laughs> which is this life. This life is really but for a moment. It seems like a long time, but it's just for a moment. Reminded of time as we, I'm reminded of time, I should say, as, you know, we talked this morning uh, in a sermon about today and what Jesus said about sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Don't be anxious for tomorrow. Lay your cares on him. Uh, it makes you think about time. And, you know, one of the things that I've been thinking about here lately is, uh, you know, I've been, you may have noticed, I've been trying to drop some pounds, and I think I've succeeded in doing that to some degree, which is why I'm able to wear dress clothes again. I, I didn't, this, I decided not to buy dress clothes after I didn't fit in them anymore, because I was like, no, that's, I, ha I need something to keep me, you know, remind me to get back to where I used to be. So that's kind of what's happened uh, on that front. And then also, um, more importantly, though, I think, uh, I mean, you know, maybe you care about whether or not the preacher wears dress clothes. I, I personally don't. But um, I do care about whether um, I get to wear my watch. Um, not because it's such a special watch uh, in the sense of watches. <laughs> Although it is kind of cool, it's kinetic relay, self-wind, you know, kind of, it's pretty cool. But no, um, the reason I care about this watch, and I've not been able to wear it because it's metal band, see, in these little bits here, you know, the metal doesn't stretch. I mean, engineers will tell you it will, but it won't stretch on your wrist. Um, the, the metal won't stretch, it won't change. This thing was very unforgiving. And it was reminding me to lose weight as well when I had to stop wearing it because I couldn't keep it on. It was cutting off circulation. But the point of the watch is, um, actually, I bought it with the very first paycheck from South Austin in 1999. <laughs> That's the point of the watch. The first time, when I first started to preach the gospel here and we first uh, paid for the preaching of the gospel, uh, in, you know, in my name anyway, I used that money to buy the watch and uh, figuring that it would be, you know, a way to keep time, if you will. <laughs> remind me of how long that has been, you know. So that's why it's been important to me in a lot of ways. I understand there's other reasons you're supposed to lose weight and care about your health and longevity, blah, blah. But I really just think that's an interesting thing when I think about the spiritual aspect of time. It's the, the reason I care about it and the reason it's important to me is because it reminds me, uh, you know, that I started to mark time uh, then. And I started to keep track then of what I was doing and how I was spending, as we just sang, uh, how I was spending those daily uh, hours and, and what I'm doing in the work. And that's where Second Peter 3 starts to come in. Uh, as, you know, you see that the scoffers come and say in the fourth verse, where is the promise of his coming? Ever since the fathers fell asleep, everything continues as it did from the beginning of creation. Well, that's not true. As Peter points out, verse 5, they deliberately overlook this fact. The heavens existed long ago. The earth that was formed out of water and through water by the word of God, by means of these, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word, the heavens and earth that now exist are stored up for fire being kept till the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But don't overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord isn't slow to fulfill his promise, as some consider him to be. Rather, he is patient toward us, not wishing that anyone should perish, but that all should reach repentance. With the Lord a day is as a thousand years, a thousand years is one day. The meaning of that is that Time is our problem, not his. 
Uh, if you think about it, it means Jesus was crucified two days ago, not 2,000 years ago, right? But it also means that our life is just very short. It is but a vapor that appears and will vanish away. And it's to say that uh, we maybe look at the world and think, oh, this looks about like it always has. This doesn't seem like it's going to change. It hasn't changed recently. It's not going to change anytime soon. But you've forgotten with the Lord, the, the day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. It hasn't been that long since he flooded the earth. And the way that the earth existed then, the way that the skies looked to us from our perspective here on earth then, was radically different. We know that in part because, of course, the scripture tells us that. But we also know that in part because of the strange and curious things we dig out of the ground that used to be here radically different from what you've got going on today. All of it to say that was pretty different. And when we think to ourselves, everything's just going to keep going like it always has, we're forgetting things don't keep going like they always have. There's nothing usual about this at all. This is different from what was here before. And something else yet is coming. This is being stored up for the day of judgment when everyone will give answer which makes you mark time and how is time being used and what am I doing with that time and have I given God a good return on his investment in me, however short my life may be. Um, am I using it for God is the real question. So it's something to think about. Uh, what Peter says there is let's not forget, let's not be you know, willfully overlooking things, but remember our own mortality and remember our short time. Not in a morbid way, but just re be realistic that, you know, today is the day to be saved. Today is the day to do what is right, what you know to do. Do it today, because there's not another opportunity. There's not another time. There's just today. And today is as a thousand years. <laughs> uh, we don't know when the Lord comes back. And people think, well, it's been a long time since Jesus was on earth. Well, sort of. I mean, if you were alive when he was alive, you've been gone 1,900 years. It was a short time, and it's going to be a short time for you and me, too. We're, we're not looking at being around 100 years from now. That's just not how it's going to be, friends. Short timers, we're all short timers. Instead, we ought to think about what can we do today that glorifies God. How is God best served today? And how does that prepare for eternity? Well, that prepares because you're thinking about him and his things, and you're doing what you can do before bedtime in the service of God, and that's all you need. And heaven is yours. But not if you haven't obeyed the gospel. Have you obeyed the gospel? Have you become a Christian, putting Jesus on in baptism for forgiveness of sins? If not, time's a-wasted. There's no day but today. They say no time like the present. No, there's no time but the present. <laughs> That's all there is, friend. Can't change the past. Tomorrow never gets here. Do the right thing while you know that it's right before the devil comes and snatches it away. If today you need to obey the gospel, if today you need the prayers of the saints, please let your need be known by coming to the front while we stand and sing.